before your people, Lord Jesus. God, we ask you, God, to fill me up, God. Help me to deliver your word on today, God. Lord Jesus, and we ask, God, that your word will go on good ground, that it will have understanding, God, as it's being delivered. Lord, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to be in the house of the Lord and to worship, to come together corporately and to see our fellow brothers and sisters' faces. Father, we just thank you, God, for all that. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We thank God for this day, this glorious day, the first Sunday of March. And I'm not going to be before you long, but our opening scripture for today is Jeremiah 29, 4 and 7. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you in exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. We thank God for the reading of the word, for the word is blessed. You may have your seat. This morning is is probably a strange title, but it's adaptation, adaptation. And I was asking the Lord for something, you know. I said, Lord, what should I speak on? And I kept hearing adaptation, and I was like, But we're teaching that in class, right? You know, right now, I'm like, am I just hearing things, or is this so? And so I began to look more into adaptation, even the more. And I said, okay, I know what it means. And let me apply it into the spiritual of what it is. So I'm going to give you a definition of adaptation. And the biological definition is a change or process of change by which an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment, mm -hmm. fitness, or survival. Then you have adaptation as behavioral, affecting the way an organism responds to its environment. And as we are learning adaptation in our class, we talk about different animals and what happens as they go from one place. So if the environment begins to not be suitable for where this particular, particular animal or species is living, they will either stay where they're at and try to make it, or they will leave. Yes. And if it's an animal, most of the time they try to leave. And they'll leave and go somewhere else, but when they go somewhere else, then their bodies begin to adapt to the place that they are now living. Mm -hmm. So if they were in a cold place and they moved to a warm place, then they, they will, their skin, their coats, their skin or their fur mm -hmm. will adapt to the change of that climate. Mm -hmm. And now if it's a plant, you know, plants can't up and move, so you have the desert and that's where we get our succulents. And our succulents learn to survive in the desert place by keeping water retained inside their leaves. So that's how we have our succulents. So then when you think about the adaptation, if the animals are doing this, how much more than when we as living beings have to do the same thing? And it just takes life to adapt to certain situations. But in a spiritual sense, adaptation for us is being from Romans 12 and 2. It says, do not conform to this world, but be 
transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and what is acceptable and perfect. So when we think about it in a spiritual sense more in our lives, we, are, we have been born again, we have been changed, we're not conforming to the world, but we are transformed, and now we have to live a different life that we're in the world, from the world, because we have accepted Christ in our life. So now we are adapting to the spirit of God, to the spirit of excellence, to, to the leading of the Lord. We are following the word, the word of God. And you have to adapt yourself to that. And it comes to a mind change. It's shifting your thinking. It's a shifting in the mindset. And if we think about it, Paul, he was one of, he was a person who always talked about this. And he said when he was with the Jews, he became like the Jews. And when he was with the Gentiles, he became like the Gentiles. And this is how we have to be in our spiritual walk. And when we're dealing with people that we are able to adapt, we're not becoming like them, but we're able to relate to them that we can connect with them. And see, Paul, he knew how to enhance his ministry because of these changes. So when he talked to the church of Corinth, he knew he couldn't talk to them the same way he talked to the um, Athens, the church of Athens, yeah. that they were two different types of churches. Yeah. 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 And so he knew what level, because you don't want to talk about above the person, and then you don't want to give them something they can't handle. Right too soon. So you have to even adapt in that when we are relating to other people around us. And then we have adapted even within our own lives. We will come in different situations in our lives, challenges, and I know I've had plenty of challenges. And you have these things that come in your life and you don't want to adapt to those things that are happening into yeah. your life. You want to fight against it. You're like, God, why did you do this to me? You're asking him questions. But he has a reason for all things. Just like back into the scripture that I first read in Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7, when, when, the, when the tribe of Judah was in Babylon in exile, even though they were there because of their disobedience, but God even had mercy on them because he had a plan and he told them what to do while they were there. He told them to, to you don't have to conform to that land, but he told them why you're there to learn how to be patient and to know that God is going to deliver you. But even in the midst of an unsettled situation, an uncomfortable space, that God is still there with you in the midst. And it's a matter of adapting to the situation, but not conforming to the situation. Yeah. When you adapt and you are finding hope and peace, yeah. and you are seeing God in such a different way. Yeah. And when I thought about it a lot, I thought about Paul. He was a perfect example. Yes, Jesus was our ultimate example, but I'm gonna call Paul like a civilian to me, you know. He was the lower class man here on earth, but he will walk and he will let us know that this is what we have to do to be locked in prison and sing songs of Zion. Now be honest, if you was locked in prison, you might be screaming, God, why am I here? You know, would I really be singing this song of Zion? But Paul, he was letting us know right then, I may be in a bad situation, but I see beyond what's happening to me. So I have to know how to adapt to whatever situation that God has placed me in at this time in my life. And I know that even he's, we have to be, um, he said, wherever you find yourself, be joyful, right? Patience and tribulation, and you find joy. And when you're locked in these situations and you learn to see God in the midst of the situation and not so much see the situation that's making you conform, because when we conform, it presses us. It's, it's
squeezing us down. It's making us feel tension that we cannot make it. But when we adapt to God and what he is doing for us, it changes the situation. Yeah. It makes us see things differently in the midst of that situation. Because had they not went to Babylon at that particular time for the tribe of Judah, a lot of other things would have never transpired. Had they never finally decided, I'm going to follow what God said, do. Think about it. You had Daniel that came through. You had Esther that came through. Because they did not focus on themselves, but they focused on their God and what God was going to do for them. They didn't hinder the process of other things happening. And see, that can happen to us. If we're so caught up in our own situation, whatever I'm going through may be about to save the life of Sister Murky. But I don't know what I'm going through and what it's going to do or what my outcome is going to be. So my outcome can be there. Going, I could be going through to help someone else, which is the case. Because Paul went through his things. He sat through sitting in prison and he built churches. He built the ministry of God. He built, he helped, he was very, how can I say? Instrumental. Thank you, sister. Thank you. He was very instrumental in building the church for God because he wasn't focused on the fact of what he was going through, but where he needed to be and who he needed to help. It was all for the sake of Christ. And we have to get to that point. And I know it's not always easy. It'll take some time. It may take you some years to wrestle through something, even though I know that's how it took me. It took me some years, but when I came on the other side, I saw all the other people that needed me. Yeah. Had I not made it, it was other people who was in need of me. Yeah. I don't know who yeah. I would have hindered. And that's what I think about even today when I go through certain situations. I'm like, I don't want to be caught up in myself well, because this is all about God. And I'll be yeah. like, God, you knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Just give me the peace that I need to get through this. Give me the directions. Tell me what to do. Let me stay prayerful before you. And you know, the more you be in those situations and you're staying prayerful, the Lord, you become stronger. In those times when you're in situations that you're trying to figure out, how did I get here? But it's because God placed you there. But even in the midst of that, because you stay focused on God in the midst of what you're dealing with and not conforming to that situation, that you become stronger in who you are and you get a stronger and closer relationship with God. And I believe that's how Paul was able to get through all of that because his strength came from God. And the more he was in those dark places, he saw light in the midst of those darkness. And he said, as long as I keep my eyes on God, as long as I don't allow the situation to overtake me, as long as I keep my mind stayed on him, I'm going to make it through these situations. Even Philippians 4, 11 and 12 says, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. That's your scripture for all that I said. Mm -hmm. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need and that's how we have to be just like that apply the, the word to your life as you're going through these things and it's adaptation adapting to the situation and not allowing it to conform you in any way possible for Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 3.1 for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under the heaven. And see, we can't be 
complaining about it because you know God he was sovereign and he and he knew that you can endure it and when we are complaining it's almost saying God I just you're just not God enough for me you know because you're complaining about it you know you, you just feel like this isn't the journey I wanted but we just don't trust God enough and we have to remember Romans 8 and 28. And, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good. For those who are called according to his purpose. And I say make that your mantra when you're going through your situation. Remember Romans 8 and 28. Just say, okay, I know this is for the good. I know God is going to work this out. And just, if you think on those things, and if you think a certain way, I'm telling you, things will work out so differently for your good. And it may not work out the way you want it to, but when you think about it, you say, I would have never even imagined it happening that way. Like, boy, that was different. Like, and you would think, you know, in your mind, you know, we're human and we're always trying to help God out. And you say, okay, well, if you do it this way, this can happen, and if that happens, and if this person does this, and if that should happen, well, yeah, things that can happen. Like, you literally writing a plan down instead of just waiting to let God work it out, and you've wasted time trying to figure something out when you could have been doing something else. You just wasted time. You wasn't being a good steward of your time at that particular time, thinking so much about how it could be done. But when God does it, he just blows your mind. So you're like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and I love when God does that for me. And when I allow myself to be in that place, to be open, to receive from him, to allow him to overtake me. And even when that happens, and even with all of this, there's times that you may even have to pivot. Mm -hmm. And I know that happened to me. I had to pivot. I had to go from working in the office to working in a classroom. I was like, this is not me. But the Lord, he saw greater in me things that I didn't even think I could do in that space. And it was allowing because I could have fought it really hard that I'm not going there. I'm not going to accept. I'm not going to accept the offer. And the offer was way too good not to accept the offer. And I was like, oh, what is wrong with me? And then I thought about it more. I said, I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's not about the fact that I left one place. God took me from there because somebody is in need of me where I'm at now. And I had to think about that. I said, oh, there's somebody in need of me here. And it doesn't have to be me in a whole classroom. And there has been times that God, I have actually had encounters with different students just telling me things and sharing with me and needing someone to have somebody to talk to that they just can't talk to all the time or be able to give that hug. Little kids come up and just want to hug you no matter, even if you just started yelling at them, sit down, be quiet. You know, you're not listening, and then they want to still come and give you a hug and still want to love you and running down the hall, Miss People, Miss People. You know, seeing that, I'm like, am I here for to give that that smile to that child? For that child to feel me, to be near me? And I, whenever they come around me, I say, God, let them get something that they may be lacking. Yeah. If they touch me, yeah. not that I'm trying to be like, be God, but just that embrace because a hug does something for people. Yeah. Just a smile does something for people. And so when the little kids come and hug me and want to be with me, I just say, God, whatever it is they're lacking, give it to them. Yeah. Whatever it is they need, let them feel that from me so they know that they look that you love them that you are a, that there is a God and they feel like the power of you and know that it's something different about Miss people she's just not another teacher here but there's something about her and I Reverend Ross she gets that all the time when she works that people know that there is something different
nothing about her. And she's there for a reason, to be there to bring people through and to make a change of people's lives. And she had to make an adaptation when she went there from working in the courtrooms to go into the classroom. That's a big change. But that's how we have to be. And when we think about, when I think about it also in the church sense, we as the church as a whole, we have to have adaptation together. We have to be open as a church together because our community is different. The community around us is changing and we have to find ways to adapt to our community to let them know who we are and who God is. We have to come up with new strategies and methodologies, different ways of drawing them in having different conversations. It may not always be a church service, but knowing how to have maybe some community conversation or bring someone else in. We have a lot of Spanish people speaking people around. Maybe have someone who could be here and interpret and just host times just to talk to them and fellowship with them just to let them know who we are. We have this community next door. Every once in a while, somebody will trickle in. But we just have to come and embrace them even more. And then we have our technologies, and we have to think, even as we are in ministry, they put everything on TikTok, Instagram, all kind of crazy stuff. It's okay to go out there with your scripture or something that you want to say, or maybe you just have an idea, a new way of doing something, or you was enlightened because some people just share, oh, I just found this out, how can I share this? And then and from that point on that, now you've gathered someone in and now they have a conversation and they see what you are about when they connect to who you are on your page. So this is how we are to be in our Christian journey. And this wasn't, Jesus didn't ask us to do anything he didn't do, okay? So you have to think about it in Philippians 2, 7 and 8. Jesus Christ emptied himself by taking the form of servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And you have to think about this. Jesus, he adapted himself to come here to earth, to be born like a baby, to, to grow up, become a man, have ministry, and then he died for us. But think about, had he not adapted to come here, to be born like a baby, to grow up, to have his ministry, where would we be? So if he did it, why can't you? And we thank God for the word on today. I was going to be short. I knew it was going to be very short. But we thank God for his word, adaptation. And just remember that as you go on your walk, that God is there with you, even in the midst of your circumstance. Don't be conform, conform to those trials that you encounter. Because they come in life to make us stronger anyway. Yeah. Jesus, he encountered a lot of situations. He was chased. They did everything to him. Everything imaginable. And we have not experienced any of that to that degree. But we have to be in a place that we can do the same as Jesus did. He came and he let us know. And it's gonna take that in this walk with him that we cannot be conformed to the world and be caught up with everything that is happening, but we have to continue to remember that we are children. We are a part of a royal priesthood. And then we are here, our lives is a reflection for others to be drawn in because sometimes we're the only Christ most people will see is how we are. And we are a reflection of our Heavenly Father. Yes. 
So when we're out there, we want people to know, oh, they're, they have to do things different. Their walk is completely different from the world. And with their walk, there is hope, there is peace, there is grace, there's prosperity, there is love, there's everlasting life. That I can have all that I need as long as I follow Christ and I adapt to his ways. And we thank God for his word on